you guys will find out I'm more scatterbrained during these than <laughs> other times. So when you try and draw the whole thing in 15 minutes, you're not going to be able to do it and develop it well enough to the point that I want to see. So I got my ceramic cats. We want to do the quick gestural drawing using the whole arm for your ellipses. And then your fabric, you're just getting the detail out of it very quickly. All right, so getting in. See, like that. I'm drawing that point so I know where the, the eye ends, giving myself a reference. And you want to pay more attention to your still life than you are to your paper. Because chances are, looking back and forth, like that, you're gonna get a better, better sense of where things are looking at it than you are just staring down at your paper. Then you're gonna draw how you think things should be rather than how they actually are. Again, those 15 minute drawings, you want to be very, very quick laying down everything. Because the more time you draw it over and over and over again, you're going to get a sense of where it is. And so when you have those hour long drawings, you can really spend the time doing the detail. But what you're doing right now is trying to figure out where the, everything goes in relation to every other object, as well as how dark and how light things are. I can see my ball is way too big. And a lot of you that are having trouble with spheres, remember you can go over and over and over again until you have this perfect sphere and then you can go in with your line. Pick that up and clean it up. Another problem I saw that a lot of people had were when they were dropping their their cubes or their uh, bases or whatever you're drawing, um, it got a little lopsided. You could tell like one side was drawn very confidently and the other one you were trying to match it up, but we're having a hard time getting there. So get your ruler or I have my paint marker here. I'm just gonna roll it like last week, right to the other side, just like that. And we wanna work general to specific, meaning we want to sketch everything out first and see, is it where it needs to be? Because if I need to move something and I start getting in and say I'm doing my hour long drawing and I get 45 minutes in and I see this is skewed and I've already like shaped it all out, I'm gonna to have to go in there and spend that last 15 minutes I could have used to build up other areas, um, fixing that so it doesn't look super strange. So I'm gonna start putting in my fabric and I'm gonna lay out my dark spots on my fabric. And you, you're not gonna to wanna to draw every single fold because the more detail you add, the fuzzier everything will get because you're trying to build up all this detail and working against each other. It doesn't form like a realistic looking um, form. So you don't want to get too busy. You'll pick out different spots, different areas that are really strong, and you'll define those. And 
see since I've zoomed into my drawing here, I have this interesting negative space in the background. Uh, my image is going off three sides of the paper right there. It fills it up nicely. It's tightly framed. Okay, before I build up my, my fabric, I'm going to want to come in here and start uh, defining things. Um, like I said, it's easy to tone um, your image just with your finger using the excess lines and that's how you're cleaning up those areas there, as well as showing places where you're going to add your deep hi highlights. And also some of you, uh, I, I posted in your comments that you should work off tone paper. So you can tone your own paper or you can work with pre-toned paper. Another thing I saw was um, you guys were getting a value scale in, but it, was, it wasn't super uh, developed. It was really, really light. Um, you're gonna want to really push those things and it's better to get too dark and too light safe. This is all I had at the end of uh, my 15 minute drawing. I would go in really quick and do a super dark background with the compressed charcoal because that gives me an additional value and uh, it just looks more complete. Uh, I'm not gonna do that right now because we're gonna be working on a bunch of things and uh, we don't wanna mess that up and bring in all those dark tones here. So I got my compressed charcoal. I'm gonna go in and define the lines, putting them down using my arm to draw rather than the wrist. So we don't want the shaky lines. And see how we're not lining, outlining everything like that. It doesn't extend through the whole nose because when I come back to shade, I'm gonna imply that line with the shading. Another issue I saw a lot of you guys had was making every line the exact same uh, width. You wanna vary up your line because the light hits things at different points, so you're gonna pick up or put down pressure to make those uh, lines change. And sometimes it's enough just to just to cross hatch a little bit, leave some hatch marks. Oh, and if anybody has any questions at any time, just interject and. Uh, we can take those questions as they come. And we can also fix some of the things that we might not have seen the first time around. We'll just go over. Do you have any like uh, cool tips for creating texture within the fabric or? Within the fabric? Yeah. So my uh, suggestion would be not to focus so much on that the first time around. In your fabric studies, you should um, try and get the form first, 
But in those hour long ones, you can, you can start to mess with that. And what I would do is I would get some different textures, uh, like a paper towel, a um, paper towel, uh, a dish rag, things like that. And then once you put down all your, uh, all your uh, tone for your paper, start dabbing it and see what that does for different things. And that way you don't have to spend time drawing it all by hand. You can go in and accent it. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so I have this out outlined. This is why we didn't go into the fabric first before we did this, because you see it's smudging everything working that's why we want to work in and out get all the things that way we aren't touching it over and over repeatedly um, and I'm not going to shade this completely but when you're having that crunch time in a 15 or 30 minute drawing and maybe this is as far as you've gotten this is when I would start going in and kind of blocking things out more so Remember directional shading. Because when we don't do that, it flattens things out. Say we just did that. That doesn't look like it's coming at us anymore because we flattened it out. It looks like a, like a top of a lid just facing us. So we want to go the direction that the ball is moving and the light is hitting it. And if we get too dark, remember we've got our erasers. And we can rub that out to make have a smoother gradient. But things like this, just going in super fast and adding in that darkness will really help the drawings, even if it doesn't look realistic that tells me that you really studied the form and how it's shaped and your next drawing you'll know from the next drawing okay i plotted this out this is where i need to be and it always helps to go in just a hair darker That way, try and count your values um, when you get finished with your first or second one. So I'm gonna stop right here, I'm gonna count. I have the white of my paper, I have the middle tone that I went and toned with my finger, and then I have um, this one that I put down with the vine charcoal, and then I have the uh, compressed charcoal. So I, I, I know I have a few values in there, though it may be limited. Um, and start upping and see with each drawing how many values you can get. So you can start working that in and create even more of a value scale and a gradient shading if you want things to be more polished. But those, those, uh, those first few drawings, I wouldn't worry so much about outlining everything and getting that so perfect as I would um, thinking about the, uh, the light. Think of those ones more as studies. That's why you're doing it on that newsprint first. And then those uh, longer drawings you're doing on the drawing paper and those are your, those are the ones you're gonna save and keep.
and I can see I have I haven't put in the uh, the phone charger yet. That'll be my last thing, but I see that shadow on there, so don't forget that. All right, and I'm not going to put my highlights in until the very, very last um, because things will go away, things will get moved. So let's move on to our fabric, okay? So I'm going to outline the fabric now just like I outlined these figures, still paying attention to the actual still life rather than my paper. Sorry, can you hear that? <laughs> That's my roommate. She just got home. <laughs> roommates? Oh, oh yeah, I'm doing a Zoom, Zoom thing for a oh. uh, road trip. Learn hard. <laughs> Let's see. That's how I'm working over shading. Hmm and moving it back in and through to get the shadow. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, does it matter if you like outline your stuff huh? or do you want us to use that like charcoal vine thing um what what was your um, question again? sorry no you're fine um okay so for outlining are you wanting us to like use our charcoal pencils or are you wanting us to use the charcoal vine throughout the whole process uh you can do either really it's just a suggestion this is the way i do it um, I would recommend at least trying the way I, I'm doing it in one or two of those drawings. And if you don't like it, you can ditch it. Um, but if it, uh, you'd rather work with the pencils, you can do that as well. Um, and I mean, we'll, we'll discuss when we do our, uh, our feedback and stuff, what I think is working and what's not. And if, if it works out for you that way, then keep on doing it. But if, if it's a, uh, it's if it's an issue, I'll let you know. Okay, yeah. I just thought that I like had it, and I realized it covers a lot more ground. Really it's a hard. lot quicker. Yeah, I noticed that. So thank you for mm -hmm. reminding me. All right, so there I I have my dark spaces filled in here of my fabric. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the vine and really pay attention when you're doing your fabric studies, how it moves and curves. When we talk about that directional shading, because right up the top of every, uh, every little fold, you'll see there's a shadow wrapping around and over. So you'll make sure you guys capture that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chalk and I'm going to do the whole thing about halfway where it mixes in. You'll get a gray right in the middle of all that. So this does two things. It allows me to clean up my lines a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it also allows me to do a gradient shading where I mix this uh, half tone. And it's the base for your, um, your highlights. All right, so pick a finger that isn't dirty. I'll start mixing that in. Okay. 
and you can fix a lot of a lot of your issues because as you draw the fabric you might see things that work out better that's that a uh, creative editing that I mentioned in the last uh, video and you'll kind of do a lot of that with fabric because it's sort of a impossible substance it has so many different curves and different ways that it's connected that sometimes the line that you chose really doesn't work on the paper once it's developed. And this is where you get your directional shading at, right here. It makes a really nice grayscale. So I'm going to go back in and start making sure everything's dark there. And you want to get super dark in areas, but be careful because it can get really muddy. I saw some of you guys that might have over overworked a bit. Just make sure you have a strong contrast because that's really what's going to sell it. Where's the vine? And you can totally get lost in the fabric. Like, uh, you can sort of zone out sort of therapeutic. I really, really enjoy drawing fabric. It's one of my favorite things. Um, you guys are fortunate because when I went to uh, art school, we spent a good uh, probably four weeks on fabric. And whole sessions for weeks were just drawing fabric. And I hated it at the time, but I'm very grateful now. And you just build it up, shape it, keep on moving around. Um, so I'm gonna drop the background and then show you guys the, the um, how to do that phone cord, which is kind of fun. Remember, don't be worried, don't leave halos. Uh, I didn't see much of that, but it's a pretty common problem. <laughs> People are afraid to mess up all the work they just did. But the more you work with charcoal, the more you'll figure out that it is super easy and it's not a permanent um, material at all. Oh, I almost forgot to go over highlights before that. So I have a list here to remind me, so that's good. See, with that dark background against these guys, it just makes it look way more complete. And say you make this too dark on this side, you can come back in with your chalk and mix it up in the background as well and get a really nice gray scale and uh, next week you'll see on the optional supplies um, alcohol ink if you haven't got that and want to um, get that before next week because we'll do uh, alcohol ink washes which are pretty cool for backgrounds and you'll want to use them the whole rest of the semester I swear. See now we have this beautiful gray. Hey professor I'm sorry I have to leave I have a, okay. I have a class that happens every Monday at 5 30. Okay so. will you email me that you were here? Sure. Okay thank you very much. All right thank you.
All right. So now we have a gray background. Where did I put down? Okay, so that white opaque ink, you can either load it in a brush or you can use a brush. And the way you'll want to do it with the fabric, is the same thing, go to about the halfway point where you want it to start fading away. Oh, and I didn't do water. Oh, there we go. It's a lot like watercolor. I'm just fanning it out. I'm just working right on top of it, going back and forth and building it up. And it works really good on the paper up here too. Make it extra white. Or say you got this mess and you're worried about touching things and your fingers like mine and it's far too big. You can go in. Whiten up the eye. And you can layer and layer it and layer it, and it's super wonderful. Just like that. All right. For that phone cord, it's kind of fun because it's like an extra layer of detail you get to add um, by putting these smaller, more ornate objects throughout. Um, and it's really such a simple thing. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to erase where the cord goes. <coughs> Don't die. Bye. I can see it a little bit over here. Over there, and it wraps around and goes over here. And then I'm going to start to define that more with my pink eraser for shading. So where the highlights would be, that's where I start erasing away. Uh, are you using both a normal eraser and that like rubbery one too? The kneaded eraser that you can pull apart and stuff? Yeah, because you can shape that for the line to get it more exact and then come across with the pink, which will cut, like uh, take more off. And then I'm going to go over it with the opaque white ink and kind of define areas and make it a smoother line. And with the uh, opaque, oh, excuse me, opaque ink, um, you said that you can add like watercolor to a brush and blend it in? Uh, you can add water to a brush and blend it in. Okay, and that's like for all those inks, like not just that pin one yeah, that you have? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. And all this is is an empty uh, Liquitex uh, paint marker. And it's not good for everything because the tip is uh, pretty wide. But it's good for most things to hit quick, quick areas. Oh, that's my coffee. That's fine, though. And then blend in that wire. And then I'm just going to take my vine for the darkest layer.
like I said, you don't have to do something like this, but it is something sort of fun and adds an extra layer if you have the time. Okay, so any, any questions? Not so far on this one. I was going to ask like how you were like going to differentiate like um, a background with like smudging and whatnot, but I realized that you're just kind of using the entire background. So it kind of answered my own question in a way. Okay, cool. Um, anybody else? It, could, it, it doesn't have to be over this. Uh, anything that came up that you were having trouble with last week. Um, I gladly show you now. No? Uh, anybody have questions over the assignments uh, that we have for this next week? Uh, I have one. Yes. On the, the still life, like drawing, like assignment, it says that there's seven drawings, but if you count like all of the like number per time drawing, it only equals six. Yeah. So, is there, like, is so that's, that's, Including your homework, uh, well, it's not called homework online. What do I call it online? Your studies. So uh, your three hours of um, fabric study, which I put a suggestion on how to break it down, but you can do uh, as many adding up to the three. That's why it says at least seven. Okay. Thanks. Anything? Is there any you don't recommend as far as fabrics go? Because I know the other guy asks for like tips if you do. Yeah, so um, I would not um, do much with uh, prints, anything with a print. Um, I'd stay away from anything really wooly, anything to add more complication to learning how to draw fabric. Um, I would make sure it's sort of a flat fabric without much texture. Um, just, just to avoid the complication of an extra thing to deal with. That definitely makes more sense, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any, anything else? Well, if there's no other questions, I'm gonna get off here so I can upload this video to uh, the website. Um, if you need anything, email me. I'm available all week. Uh, and uh, let me write down everybody that was here right fast so I can give you guys points. Hello, sorry, I tried to join or earlier, but um, my wife, I was down and then um, it wouldn't let me into the video. Oh, so, yeah, sorry, I didn't see you till like way, way later. Um, what, what, what's your question? Um, actually, uh, since I um, enrolled late, I think I definitely did the first assignment wrong. Um, is there a way I could um, maybe redo that at some point? Yeah, for sure. Um, just, uh, do you think you can get it done by, uh, it's Monday. You think you get to get it done by Wednesday? That way I can give you feedback super quick to bring into your other assignments. I should be able to. I mean, um, if, if that's not enough time, that that's fine. Um, if you can get it in by, by Sunday, I would just like to be able to offer you feedback so you can do the rest of the assignments uh, with a little bit more uh, knowledge. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> okay. Uh, just email me if that's okay, so we can, I know what date. Okay. All right. Any, anything else? Um, I think that was it for me. All right, awesome. 
Well, thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, I'm excited to see what you guys uh, work on this week. I'll see you later. Thanks for the tips. Bye. Bye. Yep. Goodbye.